Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Podium Couch. If you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe for more content like this. Today we're talking about the button box. So what I've done is I've kind of done my homemade version of a button box. It's a little rough. It's my first one, but ordered it from Amazon just in pieces and put it together. So let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to need for this project. The first thing you're going to need to do is order up some parts. If you already have some tools, then that'll save you a little bit. But you're going to need a project box, some drill bits, wrenches, uh, hole saw, wire strippers, your choice of buttons. I went with some toggle switches and buttons. You'll need a USB encoder, some carbon fiber or something to cover the face. Um, you don't have to do that but it'll look a lot cleaner and a soldering iron and this is a really simple build this is probably the most simple version you're gonna get for building a button box so here you'll see I've already pre-drilled some holes what I'm I'm just showing that you can basically use a drill bit to determine how big of a hole you're gonna need in the rear to feed the USB cable through you want to go just a little bit bigger than the head of it so that you can get the wires through as well. And then once you feed it through there and pry it through, tie a knot in it, it's going to stay sturdy and not come out. Then you need to drill your holes into your project box. So what you'll do is, I used a hole saw, there may be better ways to do this than using that bit. It did kind of make it a little bit choppy. But if you start with the proper drill bit, and pre-drill the hole as long as it is about the size of the tip and gives the tip a little bit of guidance you'll get a decent hole through there and you just go through map out your board pre-drill your holes and make sure your button fits in place then you can start wrapping the faceplate so with this um, I would say take your time I kind of rush through it a little bit and I was able to get the bubbles out, but the edges are a little rough. I'm not super stoked about the edges, but it is the first button box and I do intend on actually integrating one into more of a center console at one point. Uh, one of my upcoming projects is to build the center console and I want to try to mold some plastic and do some other things. So this was kind of just an experiment for me to do my first button box. but. Either way, take your time with your uh, carbon fiber cover or whatever you use, and that will ultimately determine whether your faceplate is going to come out the way you want it to. And basically, you just wrap the whole faceplate in it, shave off any excess, and try to be real careful with the corners because that's if you overcut in the wrong spot on the corner that's where you're going to see the imperfections in the faceplate and that's really going to stand out. Then I'm going to, I've gone ahead and cut where the buttons are going to go. That way they'll feed through nicely. Um, you may have to clean it up a little bit, take the razor blade, go around. If your buttons don't fit smoothly, um, they may also require a little bit of force. So now what you're going to want to do is place all your buttons into the box. And basically, if you've already got the, if you planned it and pre-drilled your holes and everything, you probably already have an idea of where they're going. Toggle switches and buttons tend to take different size holes. Or in this case, they definitely took different size holes. So make sure you measure it. Um, I basically used drill bits and hole saws and everything and compared them to make sure I was going to get a tight fit but one where everything was still going to slide through. And this is kind of just a preset to make sure everything is where it needs to be. And let me just say, the longer you take to determine how your holes are going to go in, the better off it's going to be. You might avoid a little misalignment. But once you've got them in place and put the put all the nuts on, you just go through, tighten them with a wrench. Make sure they're nice and snug in there before you start. 
adding wires to it. So now I've got all the wires and I'm going to go ahead and clip all the tips off because we're going to trim those down and we're going to solder them. That's going to make for a permanent connection, make the box a little more sturdy. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's the uh, 3rd of July and people in Vegas are really celebrating tonight. We got fireworks everywhere around the house. So what we're doing here is shaving down some wires, getting them ready for solder. And let me pre-warn you guys, I am not great at soldering. Um, I don't know why it's so complicated for me because I realize it should be a simple, easy thing to do but my soldering process is rough. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add solder to the connections ahead of time, putting the solder in place so that all I have to do is reheat it and reattach or and attach the wires. That way I'm not trying to hold the wires in place. Granted, I could have fed them through, probably tied them in real tight and then soldered it and it would have made a better connection. Um, but it's not necessary to do that if you just solder them in place. So I added the solder, now reheating the solder to hold on to the wires. And once that's on, you want to make sure you have a nice firm connection. And that's the finished product once you've placed them all. Now it's time to go ahead and connect the USB board to all the wire ends. So this particular encoder is a 12 button encoder. So all 12 leads will have a place to plug in. And like I said, guys, this is probably one of the easiest processes, aside from the fact, like I said, that I'm horrible at soldering. It's gotta be one of the easiest processes for building a button box because really all you're doing is attaching some wires. You don't have to build a whole circuit board and go through all those processes. So now you'll see all the wires are attached and all that's left is to plug it into the USB cable. Make sure the cable is nice and snug back in place and attach the lid. Alright, so now that the box is done, let's go ahead and test it out. Alright guys, so what, we, what we've got here is we've gone into the controller, into the properties, and brought up the properties for a generic USB joystick. And now we're just going to test all the buttons and make sure they work. So, you'll know they're working when you flip the switches. And start to see the button indicators come on. and all buttons are fully functional. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and programmed the box to iRacing, just a few buttons so we can test it out. So go ahead and turn on the ignition, start the car. Again, ignition, start the car. We got headlights, which you're not going to see during the day. 
and wiper trigger which apparently won't come on if uh, you're not racing in rain but yeah so as you guys can see button box works great it goes right into iRacing the computer automatically installed the drivers I didn't even have to go looking for software and everything functions as it should just off of simple parts bought on Amazon and compiled together to make a box alright guys so that's it for this video I'm gonna go ahead and link in the video on my rig at the end so go ahead and check that out make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and look forward to an upcoming video where I'm gonna try to blend my current rig with some 8020 and kind of make a hybrid Ultimately, I do want to go to an 8020, but for right now, I'm thinking 8020 center console. It'll give me an opportunity to play with the 8020 materials. And also, I'm going to try to do some uh, molding of plastic and build a much larger, not just button box, but full uh, infotainment. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drastically improve the setup. And I'm really looking forward to it. So if you guys want to see that video, make sure you guys subscribe. And I'll catch you later.